Now we're going to look at the standard sealed school sources that Eclipse recommends for school science. This is my steel box, which is very useful for transporting the sources from one place to another. And that's my americium sealed source. Strontium 90 sealed source. I use the americium for demonstrating alpha emissions. Strontium 90 for demonstrating beta emissions. And this is my cesium 137 source. These you may be familiar with, they're wooden boxes. The later ones are MDF. The earlier ones were made of oak or other hardwoods such as teak. They've got a catch on the front of various designs, which flips forward. And there's a little lead pot and lid on the inside. To access the source, use a pair of forceps or similar tool. Take the lid back, take the source out, put it on the side. So you can reposition and hold as you want to. That's the cup end. That houses the active component. Generally speaking, it's a foil, about 10 millimeters in diameter, very thin. The cobalt 60 source is a little pellet of cobalt 60 metal. On the back of the cup, you probably can't quite make that out, is the symbol of the element. This is americium, so that'll be AM, and usually the activity. There's also a colour spot, red in this case, to help you distinguish one from another. That red spot paint is not reliable. Often the paint colour fades over time. We're not using it back in its pot. And shut. So this is the strontium 90 source used for demonstrating beta emissions. Exactly the same design. These designs have been the same since the 1960s. You hold it so it's 10 centimeters from your hand and well away from your body. And you make sure that the end of the cup, the open end, is pointing away from your body, never towards it. Now the Isotrack source, different design. It's an aluminium shield with a rod inside. To access the source, take it out. And this is designed to be held by hand, not with forceps. When you finish with it, back into its shield, click in place. The active end is indicated by the groove there. So you must make sure your hand is at the other end, well away from the active end. When you first buy these, the screw on the back is screwed right in to lock the rod into the shield. You have to unscrew it a bit and adjust it so it clicks out and clicks in nicely. So that's the cup sources and the isotrack source. And now we're going to see them being used in practical activities. Now I'm going to demonstrate using a cup source, a cup sealed source. And I'm going to use an americium source, the americium 241, which is an alpha emitter. It's also a gamma emitter and a spark counter. And I'm going to show, demonstrate the ionizing properties of alpha radiation. A spark counter, and this one here is one made following the cleave design. You can make your own. Look at our guide GL172. Comprises a metal mesh, and beneath it is a very thin wire. And I'm going to apply a high voltage, somewhere between three to five thousand volts, between the mesh and the wire, and when I bring the alpha source close, 
it will weakly ionize the air between the mesh and the thin wire and cause sparking. Now you can buy spark counters. The best type is with a very thin wire. There are some, for example, this one. And if I tilt that, you might just see it has a metal blade underneath. They work very poorly. In fact, some of them just don't work at all. So I'm going to connect up my spark counter. And I'm going to connect in the series high value resistors, the 50 to 100 megaohm resistors. Now this makes the spark counter work far more effectively. It stops the spark counter going into continuous discharge. Switch that on. And gradually increase the voltage. Somewhere between three to 5,000 volts. If it, the spark counter starts to go into continuous sparking, just turn it down a bit, turn the voltage down a bit. So, yeah, today I can get to 5,000 volts. Now notice I'm not wearing gloves or a lab coat. These are sealed sources, and that source has been tested, leak tested within the last year, so I know its integrity is good. Take the source out. I'm using a pair of forceps here to keep my hand at least 10 centimeters away from the source. Reposition and pick it up and bring it to the spark counter. And I can show the range of alpha by bringing it backwards and forwards. I finished. Put that back in its pot. I'm now going to demonstrate the blocking of alpha radiation using a sheet of paper. A sheet of paper here. Again, take the source out of the pot. I reposition, bring the source to the spark counter. Very simple and very effective demonstration. Now the EHC unit, this is an IPC, same as the Griffin one, must be current limited to less than five milliamps. So if you were to touch the contacts accidentally, it'd be a very unpleasant shock, but no more than that. I finished, I'll just turn the voltage down to zero. Turn it off. And one thing to be careful here, there's a capacitor inside the spark counter. If you accidentally touch the contacts, you can get a very unpleasant shock. So, I will just short out the contacts and that stops that from happening. And that shows me handling a standard cup sealed source. The equipment I have here is to demonstrate the inverse square law. I'm going to use it to show you handling an isotrack rod source. At the moment, I'm taking background over 100 seconds. And the background count is 25. As you can see, I'm using a radioactivity bench. This is a purpose-made apparatus for holding a GM tube holder, the source and other equipment such as absorbers. Now, this is important. If you have a lash up of stands, clamps, blue tech and what have you, you are far more likely to focus on not dropping the source than on carrying out the demonstration effectively. This radioactivity bench is homemade. If you want to make one, see our guide GL296. Now I've got the GM tube set up at 90 degrees to the radioactivity bench, and that may come as a surprise. It's because the GM tube detects higher energy gamma radiation, mainly through the gamma interaction with the tube wall, not the GM tube fill gas. 
So to do the inverse square law, I'm going to take my gamma source, place it in the holder. And so the ends roughly align. Set that at five centimeters. And then I've got time for 10 seconds. Normally I'd time for 100 seconds. The gamma source I'm using is a cesium-137 74 kilobecquerel. And the count is 32 over 10 seconds. Move it back to 10 centimetres. And the count is 10. And then 15 centimetres. And finally, for today, 20 centimetres. The counting statistics would be much better if I'd used 100 seconds rather than the 10 seconds I've used today. So that demonstrates how to do the inverse square law. Make sure you don't put your hand between the GM tube and the source and keep back at least 300 millimeters from the apparatus.